Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Thousand Suns Legion. Now this is going to be both pre-heresy and post-heresy because we're diving into a specific unit within their ranks, the Sekhmet. If you guys have any suggestions for special units, whether it be for Space Marines, the Imperium, or any Xenos race, please comment down below and we will try to create a video for you explaining what that special unit is all about. Uh, and same goes if you have any requests for any other topics of Warhammer 40k, just comment down below. We read the comments every single day and we try to der derive the topics of our videos based on your suggestions. So comment down below if you have a request and if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we are a channel that posts Warhammer 40k content every single day. With that said, let's get into 40 facts about the Sekhmet. The Sekhmet were the veteran Space Marine Battle Brothers of the Thousand Sons Legion who served as Primarch Magnus the Red's elite honor guard. They were made up of the best and brightest of the Thousand Sons Legion's Astartes and were equipped with the resplendent crimson and ivory tactical dreadnought armor with jade scarabs gleaming on their breastplates and golden crest rearing from their Atef helmets. The Sekhmet were active throughout the era of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. The Sekhmet were all veteran members of the Scarab Occult of the Legion's Elite First Fellowship under the command of Captain Azek Ariman, who was also the Magister Templi of the Legion's Corvidae Cult. These proud and extremely devoted warriors were both combat veterans and highly ranked members of the Psychic Cult System of the Thousand Sons. The Sekhmet were powerful warrior mages and could call forth powers mortal men could never dream of wielding. On his own, each warrior of the Sekhmet was capable of subduing worlds. In battle, the Scarab Occult could simply will their tutelaries into the enemy's hidden places and burn them out with invisible flames or crush them with psychic hammer blows. Methodical and swift, Ariman's first fellowship would then push onward like automaton engines of destruction. In the days before Nicaea, when the Thousand Sons took to the field and encountered a foe so mighty that their own master, the terrifyingly powerful Magnus the Red, deemed it necessary that he take to the battlefield to best it, he often did so at the head of a configuration of Sekhmet, supported by the most deadly elements of his arcane legion and an unimaginable concentration of psychic force. Before the guard of the Crimson King, foul Xenos warlords who had slain whole worlds and mysterious entities, hellish beyond description, fell broken and shattered, and even the might of ancient terrors such as the Eldar and the Mithvar could not stand. None of the Sekhmet were ranked below the Thousand Suns cult grade of Philosophus, the final cult rank a warrior could hold before facing the Dominus Liminus. Each Astarte was able to mentally transcend his physical and emotional weaknesses, achieving a form of emotional purity that resulted in warriors who were both fearless and willing to follow orders immediately and unquestioningly. This extraordinary level of discipline was commented on by some of the other Primarchs who witnessed the Sekhmet in action during the Great Crusade. Jagatai Khan of the White Scars Legion commented that the Sekhmet were no better than automatons, while in the similar vein, Ferris Manis of the Iron Hands Legion likened them to robots, though some within the Thousand Suns suspected that knowing the Iron Hands affinity for technology and cybernetic augmentations, this comet may have been meant as a compliment. Limenrus, the Great Wolf of the Space Wolf's Legion, showed disdain for what he perceived as the Sekhmet's perceived lack of fighting spirit and his spirit at the core due to their tacturn natures. Following the Thousand Suns Legion's transformation into a Chaos Traitor Legion devoted to Zinch and the enact of the rubric of Ariman, the physical bodies of the Sekhmet, like many of their non-psychic battle brothers, were reduced to mere dust, the animating spirit that remained possessing only an echo of their once vaunted intellect. They go into battle at the behest of their sorcerer lords, advancing with eerie and unhurried calm. 
Their ornate armor, derived from the ancient Terminator warplate, ripples with arcane force, sending solid shots, ricocheting away, and even turning aside the beams of high technology weaponry. At close quarters, the Scarab Occult Terminators bat away their assailants' blows with contemptuous sweeps of power blades before delivering devastating attacks against those who insult the Warrior of Prospero with their resistance. In battle, these elite warriors are often gathered into a battle formation known as the Sekhmet Conclave, a concentration of magical force like no other. The air around these timeless warriors shimmers with energies as the sigil wards of the Scarab Occult magnify their protective powers to new heights. Gathered around their psychic masters, these massively armored warriors walk in thudding lockstep, the beat of their heavy tread, a deadly drum that speaks of impending doom. Inferno combi bolters are raised as a silent command, a blistering salvo of bolters hammering out to send transformic flames billowing in all directions. The arcane syllables uttered by their lords echo around the battlefield, though the Scarab Occult were once counted amongst the most powerful mortals in existence. Their independence is long gone, and now they serve only the sorcerer fiends in their midst. The Sekhmet are armored with cataphracty pattern terminator armor, and usually carry force weapons and combi bolters armed with asphinx shells. Asphinx shells were first believed to have been developed on Prospero for use with relatively primitive projectile weapons made to defend against the deadly Sinoians, but the difficulties of mass production and scaling of their effect limited their deployment. The weapons of the Thousand Suns are shaped by the craft of artificers and sorcerers alike. When their guns roar, they fire not only explosive bolts that tear flesh, but uncanny arcane energies that can melt even ceramite. In such a fashion is the long war waged anew. And those were 40 facts about the Sekhmet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys have any suggestions for other units of any other chapter or of any other race, whether it be Xenos or Imperium, that you guys would like us to create a video for, let us know in the comment section below. We read that every single day, so whatever you request, we create a video for that. Uh, same thing goes for anything else. If you have any other topics that you guys would like us to cover, please comment down below. And we've actually touched up on the Thousand Suns a lot, so if you're interested in the thousand suns i know their models came out a couple months ago so if you're collecting them and you want to know more about the lore check out our channel under playlist we have a thousand suns playlist and there you're going to find uh, not only the explanation of the thousand suns and who they are but also we have a really cool video on the rubric marines so the rubric marines they're basically what the Sekhmet became so check that video out it explains why the thousand suns are completely different than any other traitor legion uh, the title of that video um, i believe is the rubric marines uh, and then we also have a burning of prospero um, video there uh, that would it's going to explain um, you know the reason why the thousand sons were traitor uh, and, and a bunch of other cool lore uh, that you'll find interesting if you are interested in the Thousand Sons. Same thing goes with their Primarch, Magnus the Red. One of the best Primarchs, I think, lore-wise in the entire series. Uh, you know, debate me if you want down in the comment section below, but I think Magnus the Red was crucial for the Horus Heresy. Without Magnus the Red, the Horus Heresy could have been completely different. Uh, not just because of the fact that he broke into the... Um, to the, the throne room and completely destroyed the Emperor's Webway Project, but also because he was one of the most powerful psychers. So could you imagine if the most powerful psyker Primarch of the entire Primarch, um, the, all the 20 Primarchs, was actually a, a, an, a loyalist, which he should have been. Uh, so I think his story is crucial for the Horus Heresy. Check it out if you haven't done so already. Can't wait to see all the comments 
And um, thanks for supporting us. If you want to support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. Uh, if you can't do a dollar a month, we completely understand. Simply by commenting, liking, and sharing. You're telling YouTube that you like Warhammer 40k content. And then YouTube suggests more Warhammer 40k content from you. Uh, or for you. Whether that be um, uh, Warhammer Theories, Vaults of Terra. If you like videos with the tags that we put in, um, other YouTubers will also get suggested. And at the same time, it helps us out. So help out the Warhammer 40k community online by liking, commenting, and sharing videos. Starting with this one, share it on Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media you use, and you help us out a lot. Again, guys, thanks for everything, and I'll catch you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.